Welcome everyone to today's Living in Grace broadcast. I am Matthew Fisher. Let's go ahead and have a quick word of prayer and we'll get right into today's Bible lesson. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that the words I speak are not my own, but the Father who dwells within me. He does the work. Father, reveal yourself to us. Give us wisdom, revelation, knowledge, and understanding of your word. I thank you that every satanic and demonic force is crushed under my feet. Let your word have free course and go forth with power and accuracy on today's broadcast. It's in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So yesterday we talked about being partakers of Christ and how it, since we are partakers of Christ, we are partakers of the anointing, we are partakers of the Holy Ghost and that it makes God, He takes pleasure in our success or He takes pleasure in our prosperity just as a father takes pleasure in his children's prosperity. Now I said yesterday I'm going to talk about one thing, I, I, but I want to go ahead and Get, I'll talk about that at another time. That God does not prosper one child at the expense of another. That's why he set up the system of sowing and um, reaping. Because when you sow into one man's vision, you reap for your own. I was going to get into that today, but I wanted to just, I wanted to keep on track talking about this covenant, talking about our inheritance. So we have been talking about how we are. I've said before, we are joint heirs with Christ. We are joint heirs with Christ. Or co-heirs with Christ. Joint is the same, in the same context as saying if I, that I have a joint bank account. Meaning you have a joint bank account. Meaning we share, um, we share the bank account. The, the money in that account is accessible to both of us. And that's the same word. We are joint heirs with Christ. Or we are co-heirs with Christ. Same, same context of that I said. Me and you go into business together. And we are co-owners of the business. We share in the ownership of that business. It doesn't say that, 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 that we're minority owners. Or minority heirs, meaning you know you only own just a little teeny part of it. No, it says we are co, we share in the full ownership and the in full inheritance of God through Jesus Christ. And this is an eternal inheritance. God is not God is not asking us to give it back to him. This inheritance is not just for like while we are on earth, uh, until Jesus returns. When Jesus returns, we're going to reign with Jesus. We will reign with Him upon His return. This is this, this is not um, a lease or a rental agreement. He has given us the ownership. With him, and I and I, I, I and I know I sound bold saying this, but I, I today I'm going to go forth and fully. If, if, if the Bible scriptures that say we're co heirs with Christ, we're joint heirs with Christ, we have an eternal inheritance, if things like that don't get, I mean, we're going to really get into it today, and we're going to and we're going and we're going to um, break every religious lying spirit that that, that, that that says, you know. That makes you feel like you're less than or that God is withholding something from you. No, he has, he has given it fully to us. It's fully in our hands. It's fully in our control. That is God's will from day one. And that's what he has delivered through the blood of Jesus. Now the problem that now, now the problem is with a many, many, many Christians. Is that we have a renter's mentality or we have a lease mentality that we believe that God has just lended us to basically watch over, you know, what his inheritance for uh, a select or a certain amount of time. 
And the problem with that is we can compare that to say I'm renting a car. Yes, I might take care of that car uh, while I have it, but I really don't have that much concern over that car. The only thing I'm really concerned about with that car, car is, you know, getting it back to the place and not having to pay any, you know, extra charges. So I'm careful with it, but I'm not super concerned about the long term, about the longevity of, of that car. I just want to make sure I get it back to the people without having no scratches or having no, you know, spills all over the seats or anything like that. But... If I was the, if it was my own car, if I was the owner of the car, I have an invested interest in that car because that car is not something that I am just renting from somebody for a short amount of time. This, this is my possession. It belongs to me. So if I'm the owner, I have. An invested interest in that car compared to if I'm just renting the car from the um, Hertz or Dollar or where the, the car rental company. There, 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 there's a difference there. And many Christians don't understand that there are owners. They Everything that God has literally belongs to them. They are owners. They have ownership in it. Many of us have the Many of us have the the, the, mentality, the lease or renter's mentality where they believe that, you know, God has just, you know, entrusted them with something for a short amount of time. And they feel like, I just want to do a good enough job with what God has given to me that I don't go to hell. Or I want to, you know, use what God's given. No, no, no. That's... That, 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 that's not the mentality that God wants us to have. He don't want to have, okay, He just give us something for, you know, He's given us our gifts. He's given us, you know, possession. He's given us the, our inheritance for a short amount of time. We got to give it back to Him. And hopefully I do a good enough job that I don't have to go to hell. No, He said, I want you to have an ownership mentality. I have made you joint heirs. I have made you co-heirs with Christ. I made you co-heirs with Christ. You are a son of God. You are. You have be, been made the righteousness of God. You are in right standing with God. You are eternally justified. Everything that I have, I'm not leasing it to you. I've not loaned it to you. I have freely given it to you through Jesus Christ. It belongs to you. Everything I have belongs to you. And this is what we're going to look at right now. Because I'm not making stuff up here. Let's look what Jesus said right here. Let's go to the book of John in the 16th chapter. And he says, all things that the Father has are mine. All things that the Father has is mine. So that's Jesus boldly declaring that everything the Father has, he didn't say he was leasing it, he didn't say he was borrowing it, he didn't say he was renting it. He said, it's mine. It's my possession. I'm the owner of it. I, it belongs to me. Now say that it don't belong to the Father. But it belongs to me as well. That's what he's saying. All things that the Father has are mine. So he, he, he's declaring his possession right there. He's telling his disciples that. that, that so, 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 so it says all things that the Father has is mine. That means that the cattle on a thousand hills is Jesus's. That means that the Father, the creator of the heavens and earth, the possessor of heavens and earth, that means him, Jesus, is a possessor of heaven and earth. All things that the Father has is mine. That's what Jesus is boldly declaring right now. But he, he, he didn't stop there. He said, Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. He will make it known unto you. And he's talking about 
the Holy Ghost. Let's go quickly back up to the 13th verse. Howbeit, when the Spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. So he will show you things to come. He shall glorify, he shall glorify me, for he shall receive what is mine, and shall show it unto you. So, why, why is Jesus... What, and then, okay, now let's go back to all things that are mine. All things that the Father has are mine. So he says he's going to show you all things that are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take what's mine and show it unto you. Now is he, now is Jesus trying to boast here? Is he trying to, is he trying to brag? Or look, look what all things that belong to me. Is that what the job of the Holy Spirit is to just... To, to kind of brag on Jesus. Yes, to brag on Jesus, definitely. But it's not to brag at Jesus and, and leave us out. It's not like Jesus is one of them selfish type of guys. He's not one of them... He, 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 he ain't... Um, he ain't uh, one of them rappers you you see on TV. Every time I come around your city, bling, bling. And, and he um, is just bragging, this is mine, look what I got, and, and boasting. That ain't Jesus. That's not Jesus' character. Remember, Jesus came, he died, and risen again that we may receive our inheritance, that we may receive our share of our inheritance, which is the fullness of God, that everything that the Father has belongs to Jesus. He died so we could have that. And now he says that the Holy Spirit is going to take what is His and show it unto us. So why is the Holy Spirit going to show it unto us? Just quickly go to let's go to 1 Corinthians the second chapter and the ninth, and the ninth verse. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. But he don't stop there. For but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yet the deep things of God. Now let's quickly, so, so, so God has revealed those things to us by the Spirit. The same thing we were just talking about in the book of John, the 16th chapter. Now, 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 now let's go, what's the point of, point of God revealing to us? Is, 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 is it just for us to, to, you know, see what Jesus has? No, but let's go to 12th verse. Now we have not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is God, that we might know the things... That are freely given unto us. So the Spirit of God is showing those things. He says everything that the Father has is mine. Now he's and, and it says that the Holy Ghost is going to show us those things. That's everything that belongs to Jesus. Everything that the Father has. And now he's saying that the Spirit is showing us those things so we may know our possession. That I may know what has been given to me. That I may know what belongs to me. That I ain't going to get deceived by the enemy. That I ain't going to get deceived by religion. But I have a know. I have a knowing of my belonging of the things that God has given given to me that I may know my share, that I may know that I'm a co-owner and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for today's Bible lesson. Continue to reveal unto us the height, the depth, the breadth, and the length of the love that you have for us. Continue to write this word in our hearts and in our minds and increase it within us. It's in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen. Until next time on the Living in Grace broadcast, I am Matthew Fisher. God bless.